we are happy to be here. Aloha United we stand every Thursday, 12 o'clock rock. And today with Jennifer He, the Chief Development Officer uh, of the Salvation Army, which does a lot in Hawaii. Um, and it comes to us through the Aloha United Way. Welcome to the show, Jennifer. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So um, you've been here before. You, you, know, you know we like to get right into things. And uh, I want to get right into your program that you're doing um, called CEO Sleepout. Uh, which is a very provocative name, you know, wow. Right. And when is that? Well, our CEO Sleepout is going to be held on Friday, September 16th through Saturday, September 17th. And we start promptly at 6 o'clock p.m. and it goes through the next morning and we finish at 8 o'clock in the morning. On, on a Saturday morning? On a Saturday, yeah. yes. Just as well, it's, it's a weekend. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's going to be held at the Hawaii State Capitol Rotunda. Uh-huh, that mm -hmm. is something. That's why we're here, uh, at least right. uh, virtually, <laughs> in the Hawaii State Capitol Rotunda <laughs> right now, together, that's what it is. So, <clears throat> so what is this intended to do? Well, the intention for the CEO Sleepout is really to focus on core-related issues to um, homelessness and that's really something that the Salvation Army um, faces or and um, works with deals with on a daily basis yeah. and um, it's really an opportunity for these key community leaders um, to come out and um, want to focus on a long-term issue come up with a long-term issue for homelessness yeah. um, it's a systemic issue here in Hawaii and we want to solve it yeah well, Salvation Army had been, you know, looking homelessness right in the eye for, from, from its origins, I think. Right. You, you're not shy about dealing with the disadvantaged. You get right, you get on the front line, so yes. to speak, where a lot of other charities uh, and religious organizations um, just give money. You know, it's kind of a guilt thing. And I think a lot of political organizations, they just give money thinking if they give enough money, they'll feel better about it. And maybe, just maybe enough will rub off in the right place so that we at least have some you know, some reduction in homelessness. Mm -hmm. But you guys get right in there. So how are you going to get these uh, CEOs to come down and spend the evening in the rotunda? Some people don't like to go to the Capitol building, you know. Right. <laughs> uh, so we are very lucky in the sense that our co-chairs are two key community leaders who have been at the forefront of um, raising the homelessness issue. And that would be Rick Blangiardi from Hawaii News Now. Major. Major, and, right. high profile. And uh, Dennis Francis from the Honolulu Star Advertiser. That's also major. Right. So they will be there and they will um, help to help us reach out to their um, colleagues and peers and um, let them know why it's important for them to be there and to step up and yeah. um, find a way to create change. How many community. CEOs can you accommodate in the program you have in mind? Well, we would love to have at least 25 um, CEOs or key business leaders participate. Um, right now, we have a really stellar group of leaders, so we're excited at the caliber. And, uh, you know, this is really an opportunity for these community leaders to have a um, think tank session. You know, uh, they're leading multi-million dollar billion dollar companies and we know that if they can um, use their brain power to perhaps focus on another issue for one night imagine the good that that's going to do for Hawaii yeah. and the community. Well uh, yeah presumably they know how to manage things and, and know how to come up with ideas that are out of the box. Mm -hmm. So um, but what's what's in it for them? I mean they're going to go and, and I, I certainly I'm, I'm impressed with the notion of <coughs> having a sleep out because people tend to be very candid when they're sitting alone at night having a schmooze, mm -hmm. especially in the state capitol, uh, you know, in, in a group they would not otherwise be with. And, and the commitment is there. They're, all, they're, all, they're there all right. night. That is something. But what's in it for them? Uh, I, I can, I'll, I'll answer my own question to some degree by saying, well, they, they like to deal with other CEOs. That helps their career. It helps their influence. It helps their you know, business connections if they do that, but what else? Right. Um, well, we hope, in addition to them um, being able to network with one another, um, we really hope that uh, by them coming together, they can understand the issue even better, um, understand and experience it for one night. And they'll be able to then have a closer 
and better understanding of homelessness so that when they're driving down the street, they don't just think, oh, that person is a drug addict or, yeah. um, you know, they're too lazy to find a job. There is a reason why, and we want them to, we want to educate them on that, on the reasons. They're going to bring in uh, fancy beds with, uh, you know, uh, down pillows and... Uh you know, soft mattresses for them? No, we're not. They, uh, our CEOs are committed to sleep just like in, out in the elements, like how homeless people do. Um, we'll be giving them corrugated cardboard boxes. Corrugated cardboard boxes. That's a reality right. test, isn't it? And uh, they can, we'll be giving them a blanket, but they can bring their own sleeping bag or um, some people have talked about bringing their own air mattress, but <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll be sleeping out in the elements. Yeah. And what about uh, accommodations? You're going to have uh, fancy food, uh, you know, Peking duck or something flown in? Right. It's um, fancy food right out of our emergency disaster canteen. <laughs> we are lucky that um, one of our uh, community leaders that's participating is uh, Rick Nakashima and he's a co-owner of Ruby Tuesday so he'll be donating the food for us that evening. Oh that's yeah. great that's great yeah you can't make the food too good yeah you gotta give these guys a real experience reality. Right. He's gonna experience. do simple Ruby Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so they uh, just, uh, you, you mentioned before the show that they're also gonna get uh, a walk around they're gonna take a hike before the sleep, sleep out. Where, right. where, where are they gonna go? Well, you know, over the years, the Salvation Army has built uh, relationships with the people that are actually on the street. You know, every week we have a group of um, young adults that go out and they um, feed the homeless people out in Chinatown. They've built solid relationships with them. They learn who they are. They're not just any person. That's so important. Right. It's about building one -on -one, relationships. One-on-one, yeah. Yes. And um, we've been able to move a lot of those homeless people into jobs, housing, and a new community because of these relationships we've built over mm -hmm, the years. Mm -hmm. So we'll have an opportunity for these business leaders to um, meet some of our friends out on the street, um, feed them the peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but also um, get to hear their story and learn about why they're out there. So as, the, as your CEOs are walking down the street with uh, one of your, your uh, yes. Salvation Army staffers, yes. <coughs> They'll be introduced to some homeless people. Yes. And they'll be able to talk to them, ask them questions, understand how it is to be homeless. Right. Um, you know, it's uh, having that one-on-one -on -one, um, time. You know, we're not parading these homeless people. It's uh, people that we have built relationships with over the years. Right. And um, so that these business leaders can learn about who they are, their people, and how they can help personally. Why would a homeless person be engaged in that conversation? Um, what, what's in it for him? I feel that um, for the homeless person, they're just like any other um, person, you know, uh, human being, where I feel that sometimes, you know, they have a story to tell. And sometimes they want to share their story. They want others to know um, why they're out there. You know, it could be because um, they couldn't afford first and last month's rent um, because housing is so expensive here in Hawaii. It could be where they were laid off of a job and they don't know how to get connected to a new job. Um, or it could be that they are addicted to drugs and they need help in that next step to rehabilitation. So there's a story out there, yeah. and... Um, we like stories. Right. That's what we do here, stories. Mm -hmm. That's the most interesting thing. If, you know, if I were, and I have considered this, having a show about homeless, I would bring in homeless people to tell their stories. Not all the same story, all different stories. Yes, so. there's, there are amazing stories of transformation um, that we hear on a daily basis at the Salvation Army. So uh, a lot of, some of the time that evening will be spent having uh, people whose lives have been changed through the Salvation Army come in and share their story with this with their CEOs and um, you know talk about how their lives have been changed. So they'll come back. Uh, some of these uh, homeless people will come back to the rotunda and join the CEOs right. there. Right. Um, not the homeless people that are out in Chinatown, but people who, for example, um, the person that is leading our um, or in charge of our counseling for the. Uh, addiction treatment services, 
um, he went through our, he was homeless, he went through our program, um, and we provided him a job at the end. And That's his, always a good thing right, to do. And his life has been turned around, and so he'll be sharing his story. And there's many stories like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, and uh, you mentioned also there were some policemen involved in this. HPD, is them. tell me the involvement of HPD. What, why did they join? Why are they part of this? And what are they doing in it? Uh, well, we'll have HPD and the Sheriff's Department participating. And we want, we invited them and they were very willing to participate because uh, they're out there too in the community. They work with these people and um, they help us in the sense of connecting the Salvation Army um, to these homeless people. And we wanted them to share their stories with the business leaders and CEOs and provide their perspective on how they think um, we can find a solution. Sure, because they're on the street also. Yes. You need all the data you can get to understand what's going on. Right, and we need different perspectives. Yeah. And so uh, HPD and the Sheriff's Department will provide those different perspectives. Are you going to be there, actually, Jennifer? Yes, I'll be sleeping out. Okay, yeah. you're going to have a sleeping bag, or are you going to do the uh, terrazzo floor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I might bring my sleeping bag. Okay, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, so now it's getting late. Uh, the CEOs have walked around, they've had their meal, um, and they're talking among themselves, you know, and there's only one subject really in a situation like mm -hmm. this that you that created around them, this set of circumstances. They're going to be talking about what to do. Right. And I mean, if I, if I was there, that I would be so focused, and as you want them to be focused, they will be focused on that. What do you expect that that conversation will be like? Well, I hope that uh, the conversation is, well, I know with these business leaders, the conversation will be not only lively, but uh, just provocative and um, full of tons of ideas on what the Salvation Army can do to move forward in the next step and um, how we can partner with other agencies and um, organizations to solve this issue um, you know one of the I think fun things about the evening is after the CEOs come back from their time in Chinatown um, they'll be broken up into different groups um, talking about topics related to homelessness and we'll have program leaders from the Salvation Army but also Aloha United Way will be participating and you know they'll be talking about front lines what how can we solve the issue hearing from a frontline person perspective? Mm -hmm. We're going to take a short break. That's uh, Jennifer He. She's, she's the Chief Development Officer of the Salvation Army Hawaii. And uh, this is a very interesting program. It's the CEO Sleep Out at the Rotunda. Very interesting. We'll, we'll take a minute break. We'll come back and we'll talk more about what might be discussed and what you know, choices and decisions might be under consideration by these creative and um, you know, well-trained individuals who run the companies of Hawaii. Aloha, it's summertime in Honolulu, Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm your host for Shrink Wrap Hawaii. We're on every Tuesday at 3 o'clock and we talk about mental health and general health. Join us. Thank you. Hi, my name is Justini Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers Series. This is the place you can come to for insight on the perspective and history and passions of Hawaii's farmers and all folks involved in Hawaii's local food system. What kind of folks do we have on? So we have everyone from local farmers, we have foodies, chefs, we also have journalists, uh, researchers, anyone who's actually working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So join us every Thursday and uh, tweet in to us and ask us some questions and leave your comments as well. Thanks. We're back. We're live. We're here with Jennifer He. Uh, she is the Chief Investment Officer of the Salvation Army. And we're talking about a really interesting program that they're setting up for September 16th. Yeah? Right. Um, in, the, in the State Capitol Building, in the Rotunda. And it's the CEO Sleep Out. What a creative idea. Is this the first time? It's the first time here in yeah. Hawaii. Your idea? Yes. <laughs> I right. wish I could take credit I'm for impressed. it. I'm impressed. I'm <laughs> impressed. So 
I like to spend a little time with you trying to get into the mind of, you know, of, of the CEO who might be there. Uh, so you're, first you're going to show them data. You're going to walk them down the street. You're going to have them talk to people that you know that your, your soldiers, so to speak, know uh, on the front lines. Uh, and, and that would be a really opening, eye-opening experience. I mean, I think most people have not had the experience of really engaging with a homeless person. For sure, right. Uh, and they don't understand, they don't know. And then, of course, you're gonna have, um, you know, your people talk to, to the CEOs when they get back to the rotunda by mm -hmm. the campfire, so to speak. There's no campfire, by, by the virtual campfire. Right. <laughs> and the virtual marshmallows back in the rotunda. But what, what kind of, what, issues do you want the CEOs to be familiar with at the moment they sit down for their hard-nosed discussion? Right. Uh, I think that we want the CEOs to um, delve inside the mind of a homeless person. Um, they need to get a sense of their mentality and um, understand that it's a deep issue and um, what's the cause of their inability to um, take the next step. Um, so we want the CEO to be able to understand that there are deep-seated issues. Uh, we want our CEOs and business leaders to also know how to treat homeless individuals or groups. You mean in dealing with them? Right. I Just think mano y mano, or right. people to people. It's about building relationships with these yeah. people and yeah. truly understanding their story. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of times people get intimidated or they think, you know, uh, handing them a sandwich isn't going to do much good. Well, they get angry at them. They, you know, they say, you're invading my space, you're taking away my public space, you're shrinking my world because you're, you know, you're subsuming it, right. you're, you're occupying it, and uh, why don't you leave me alone, go away. I think a lot of people react that way. Exactly, and so this is really going to be um, a safe place session where these business leaders can ask questions like that. How do I deal with um, a homeless person when they come up to me and they ask me for money or food? Um, so it's a it's providing them a safe place to talk story, basically, and yeah. learn about the homeless. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I hope you are able to convey to them the, the the community of homeless. You know, rather than just the limited individuals. You know, the the person to person individuals, because I think we've had. I mean, it's easy to find somebody who's homeless who's been homeless for five years now. In a way, we've come to that point in the in the in the process. Um, and so we, we have a community out there. How do they get along? How do they deal with each other? Um, how do they you know, borrow, beg, steal, whatever they do in order to get the things they need to live from day to day? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and what role does the other fellow play in their lives? You know, that kind of thing. Right. And I think that's another topic that we'll be um, addressing is why are these people still homeless? You know, it could be um, that they're facing so many uh, challenges that deter them from getting off of the streets, like affordable housing, like a job, like a connection to a new community. Those are three pillars that the Salvation Army really focuses on. And so we want these key business leaders to help us come up with a solution of how we can help these homeless people focusing on jobs, housing, and a new community. Yeah. And, I mean, they're going to be thinking about it, but maybe you could offer them some help on it, too, is what does it cost, you know, to deal in the immediate? Mm -hmm. And, of course, there are much longer-term problems involved, but what does it cost to, um, you know, get people housed? What does it cost to get them fed? Mm -hmm. What does it cost to, you know, to get them off the street? What does it cost? Um, are you going to have somebody telling the CEOs about that? We'll definitely have um, our front lines... Uh, program directors will be there. They work with these homeless people on a daily basis. So they know the costs and that's one thing that we hope to convey or share with, and share with the CEOs. Look, this is how much it costs um, and perhaps you can step up and make a difference and um, through financial resources um, we can start to create lasting change for the community. Yeah, yeah. So, but it's, this is more, is it not, than just raising money? Definitely. I mean, this money, there's got to be money involved because we have to raise money to deal with the immediate problems. But, but it's got to be more than just uh, writing checks here or uh, knocking on legislative doors. Um, right. What's the next step beyond just raising money? 
You know, uh, we started this event as a fundraiser and we quickly realized that this is something that the business community needed and fundraising, encouraging them to fundraise for this wasn't going to get them there. And uh, so we're really focusing on um, getting their brain power in one room yeah. or one location yeah. and really having an opportunity to take advantage of their time and um, how they how they think, you know. Um, there's a reason why they're in these key leadership roles. And so we wanna um, take their knowledge and be able to apply that to um, create better change for you're, them. You're calling on them to do more than they or, or, you know, usually ordinarily do. I mean, it starts with fundraising, I, and, I, and I think fundraising has gotta be a central part of it because you know, CEOs in this town anyway, I don't think most towns, part of their job is to do charitable things. Part of their job is to, uh, you know, attend black tie dinners and raise money for the right organizations. Mm -hmm. That's their civic duty. And you can't be a CEO, uh, you know, who is accepted by other CEOs, by the community in general, if you don't do that. You must do that. Right. So you start out on fertile ground, so to speak. Right. And we want them to know that, um, you know, it's our responsibility to care for the people in Hawaii. And yes, they can do that by attending a black tie dinner, but they can also do that by contributing their time. And this is one way that they can participate in doing yeah. that. And it takes an army of leaders to uh, create change. Yeah, mm, that's an appropriate term for the Salvation Army. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, going to that next step then. These guys are smart. They didn't get to be CEOs, and girls. <laughs> they didn't get to be CEOs for nothing. And they got to be creative, and they got to have organizational skills, and good communication skills, and you know, a good analytical thought process. So you're going to put them in a room. Essentially, the rotunda is the room, mm -hmm. and you're going to ask them to identify, consider, and and settle on some options, some takeaway points from you know this evening of uh, CEO sleep out. Right. What are the options that you expect will be prominent? Well, I think that one of the biggest options that we would want them to walk away with is that, yes, they can do something, whether it be um, getting their company to start volunteering at the Salvation Army or, or anywhere, any um, IHS, you know, wherever. Um, get their employees engaged and giving back to the community. And um, that's one of the things that I love about Aloha United Way, for example. They get, they engage with many different companies. So w that would be one takeaway is mm -hmm. um, community engagement. So it's the extension of the, of the charitable thing to get other people exactly. on board and to get the public sensitized in the right way to dealing with this. I mean, a lot of people in, in the public, you know, as I said, it's like, you know, get the people away from me. Mm -hmm. But in fact, they need to understand that those people are our people and that we share this community together and we have got to care about each other or we lose, we lose something profound. Right. So these CEOs could be leveraged to go in that direction. Right. And we want these CEOs to also walk away with a story. There's nothing more powerful than um, sharing your own personal story of what you experienced. And we want these CEOs to walk away and say, hey, you know, I just spent um, my Friday night um, sleeping out in the Hawaii State Capitol Rotunda. And it was a remarkable experience. It was an amazing I'll tell experience. Tell about some of the people I met, whoa, okay. and what I learned, whoa. Exactly. <laughs> and um, this is the reason why. Yeah. yeah. It'd be very popular. They'll carry that message to their companies, to their associates, to other CEOs who are not there. But uh, I want to go, we have a few minutes left, and I want to study one thing with you, and that's, we talked about the immediate, we talked about the intermediate, now let's talk about long term. Right. I think we all agree, you know, there's a, a tons of charitable organizations out there that want to, that try, that, that exist, you know, for dealing with this issue. Um, but the issue is very profound and it's connected with so many other things. You ticked off a few of them, you know. Um, the, the cost of occupancy in the state is too high. Um, there's a disparity of income that's much too wide. Uh, there aren't enough good jobs. Uh, the education is lacking and um, essentially disrespected. There's a disconnect with government. People don't feel the government's going to help them properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and the economy itself, it, which is focused on, uh, you know, 
menial jobs in, in hotels. Um, so these are all things that are, in my view, and I think in a lot of people's views, that are connected, and they are collectively, uh, they, they create a situation where we have an increasing number of homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, and other states are like this too, we're not the only one, but we have more than our fair share here for one reason or another, including the weather. Um, so can you get these CEOs to look deeper, to look longer, to see five, ten years away, to deal with these profoundly difficult, you know, structural issues in our community and our economy? Can you get them to do that? How can you get them to do that? I believe that we can, and the reason why I believe that is because these business leaders in Hawaii, I believe, are true visionaries, just like our divisional commander. Um, when he, Major John Chamis came to Hawaii, he believed strongly and passionately that the key to solving part of this homeless issue was jobs, housing, and a connection to a new community. So those are the three main pillars that we'll be focusing on that night. And I know that the business leaders that are there are experts in these areas. And that's what I hope um, they will lend their expertise in to solving, helping to solve the, those three main issues. No, I know you're not going to put words in their mouth. You're, you're going to let them do their thing. You're going to let them come together and come up with some really, hopefully, uh, you know, very useful uh, suggestions, if not, you know, the, the, the core of some legislation. But, but if I could just ask you what you think um, the kind of action points might be, as examples, mm -hmm. uh, what kinds of things would you be hoping for them to do? Uh, legislation, uh, some, a letter to the governor, uh, some action with respect to uh, charitable organizations, some kind of way to bring the whole effort together. Um, any thoughts about what you, you know, if they come, if they come to you on the side and say, Jennifer, you know, we're having this conversation, but what do you think I should actually insinuate into the discussion so we get an action point that will do something? Mm -hmm. uh, I would hope that um, for me personally, that they walk away with a new piece of um, just knowledge or education about um, the homeless uh, the homeless that are out there. You know, I think there's a lot of um, miscommunication or lack of education about these people that are out on the streets. Um, so I would want them to s learn who these people are and why they're out there. And then I want them to say, okay, how am I gonna help that person that I met on the street? How am I gonna get them to a job training program? What can my company do to assist um, this person that I met? Um, they obviously have some, say, construction skill. So perhaps, you know, I know someone in the construction business. Maybe I can make that connection. Or I know someone that um, teaches at a community college. Maybe I can get them connected there. So that's what I hope some of the takeaways might be. What about some of the more big money things? Like how, how can the state incentivize the construction of affordable housing for tens of thousands of people uh, where they're not going to make any money? Okay, but they will provide, they will build and provide on a sustainable basis housing for people who cannot otherwise afford housing. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts? I mean, would you, I, I assume you will put that question to them. Any thoughts about what the op options are? Um, I don't know specifically what the options are, but you know, I think about leaders like Dwayne Carisu, who is working on Good his, point. Um, the project out in Sand Island area and the pl plantation style homes. You know, those are for families that are um, not just ho homeless, but they've gone through rehabilitation and they um, needed that extra boost yeah. and support. And um, a key community leader like that um, saw the problem and thought, okay, this is how I think I can solve it. Yeah. Um, so we want these CEOs to think big picture. <clears throat> you know, they may not have personally have the resources, but they know they know someone that can do that here in Hawaii. Right. You know, they have the contacts. I think your point is very well taken. They should share uh, th what they know about how you do this. Mm -hmm. And Carisu is a perfect example. They should know why he did it, how he did it, whether, you know, they can do it too. So that's, that's another great benefit of putting them together. They can compare notes mm -hmm. on taking action, either in business or in government. Mm -hmm. 
<clears throat> Jennifer, there's been a very valuable discussion. This is going to be a terrific program. Thank I you. hope we can talk about it after the fact and, and see what you learned and what they learned. And maybe we'll see you out there. Maybe you will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Jennifer He, Chief Development Officer of the Salvation Army, organizing a really interesting and provocative discussion uh, called CEO Sleep Out in, in the state capitol on uh, August 16th, and uh, uh, September 16th. And if you want to know more, go to the website for the Salvation Army, which is? hawaii.salvationarmy.org. I knew you'd say that. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. <laughs>